Hello again. If you missed our last couple of videos, we had some time off from the van build and took ourselves off to the mountain for a few days for some much needed TLC. Adventure's over, we need to get back to the van build as the good weather is fast approaching and we still have a lot to do and we are very eager to take her out. So, let's get back to the old girl. So it's been a good couple of weeks since she last time was running. Let's have a look how she starts now. The battery's gonna be dead. Pressing button and nothing happens. It's flat. Anything? Nope. Completely flat. So, if you watched the last video, you will know that we are halfway through finishing our ceiling. But, as we were making good progress, Aramis decided to do some bodywork and some pre MOT checks. And oh dear, what have we found here? I bet you can't guess. <sighs> oh, why I even started this? More rust. I slowly started checking all these repairs that's been done previously. Right, this one wasn't too bad. I had to do some spot welding there and there. There was a tiny bit here. And then I came to this and that's what I found. Yeah. It's definitely not that's what I wanted to find. I guess I'm sticking to this corner now. What was meant to be just welding the wheel arch and finishing off old repairs, the entire day turned into welding and treating rust, which meant less time for the actual conversion. Well, I did not expect that I'm gonna have to do so much welding. Oh, I was thinking that I'm gonna do some welding on the wheel arch, but that's it. After all the inspection of the seals, the wheel arch, drying, need sanding, then this bit, drying, drying, oh, here, still need to do some welding. And that's the job for another weekend. Oh, that's it for me now. Another weekend and we cracked on with all the body repairs. So what we got to do now, we need to finish fixing quite a few things on this side of the body seals. Still need to finish this wheel arch, which is coming along quite nice. But today's focus is gonna be a big part, which is the corner piece in there. They already cut the piece out. So hopefully I can finish this corner in the next couple of hours. Then I have a couple more little bits. There's one bit here. I'm probably gonna clean this bit. And I need to redo this repair. It looks like it's been repaired. But the thing is, I don't really know how long it's been since it's been repaired. So I just gotta fix this just to prevent the rust. Everyone knows it's a transit. Yes, we knew that's coming and it, it is what it is. I really don't mind that. It's just really time consuming and getting back on welding. Emily is finishing up the wheel arch. I'm done with the welding for today. And the left side is pretty much done. Now let me get under. So all this corner is welded. This corner is also welded. I just need to get some more seam sealer. And then as I said, I'm just gonna need to do the right side at some point. But this side looks much better for some reason, I don't know why. 
all the left side is much worse but i'll leave the right side for another weekend because we want to finish the ceiling we've done as much as we can with our time but got quite bored of welding so we left the last bits of welding for another time and we jumped back inside the van to finish the ceiling a quick tidy up and let's crack on so the slats that we created from the plywood were slightly shorter than our van ceiling so we decided to finish the end bits by cutting them to size and making a connection which in the end turned out quite good i've been um managing the situation but the situation was if you don't look too closely i mean actually now when i'm looking through the camera you can't even see it i mean i'm right in the light hold on Basically, there's yeah. a connection. What we had to do is rather than having loads of screw holes, extra ones this side when it's been quite uniform, Amos came up with the idea of screws on the end and then sticking the rest with silicon. Obi Wan. Yeah, um, we used this multi surface sealant and adhesive. Just to kind of give it a bit less of a crowded yeah, screw. Yeah, it, it, looks, it looks neater. I think it does look neater. But just one thing that obviously we're we kind of had to cut off like bits and pieces from different slats that the, the that the width and the grain some on some pieces don't match and if you starting looking really closely you can see that this one is a bit wider this grain is completely different but <laughs> so this is all kind of part of yeah doing it ourselves it was never gonna be like textbook uniform exactly. and i like it that's pretty much done. I'm th I'll just try to cut this piece to finish this side and we're not going to do anything on the right side because it's going to have a couple of tiny up this corner and ceiling's done pretty much. I'm really happy about it. turned out even better than actually I was expecting. So I thought I'd describe this corner. This is how straight our walls are. I mean, that's actually not bad at all. Yeah, so now if we just cut the gap and then it would cover the, the, the gap. And it actually worked out. The first time ever, it worked I, out. I'll, first try. So, I think let's scrub this film off. Again. Yeah, start measuring and designing. Cut to the time lapse again. <laughs> That's the part where Emily gets nervous now. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's not like even nerves. I just, I can't even begin to think how you start <laughs> building furniture and make it like functional for it functional if it's functional like drawers opening and closing then probably no <laughs> no to be honest i think i'm really looking forward to start building all the benches and kitchen units and everything so now we've done a rough kind of idea how it would look like so we'll see the kitchen in the corner and u-shaped bench that would when it's in the night mode, it would make a king size bed, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it would be king well, size bed about, with that corner cut off. It might have to adapt slightly. The thing is, it, there's a lot of things that we need to stuff in these small yeah. places. What have we got? So we've got toilet, fridge, diesel heater, diesel heater, water tanks or little water things for the mm. kitchen. The mattress is going to double up as the cushions on the yeah. benches. So we haven't got to worry about storing that. Although we have also got that bloody plate shelf up there. I forget about True. it. It's so dark. I think yeah. <laughs> We're going to have a cupboard to the top and maybe actually, a small one. Actually, thinking about it, we're probably going to do all right for storage, I reckon. Yeah, it should Cause be. Because we're not right. going out in it for We're not living in it. So yeah, it's, it's not it's, like. Yeah, like if someone thinking that we're building this van for, to live in it no it's just a weekend it's like an adventure van isn't adventure it adventure van yeah where you can just pull up in the play by or whatever and have a night of sleep and that's it then you move on so it has only got to be like 
basic mm. necessity stuff. So I think we'll be all right. If we can stick to this rough design, I think we'll be okay. So I think we're just going to pack up. Yeah. That's be it. Another weekend and our plan had changed. Our first plan of the day was to start welding, but due to no power, we had to rethink. Because we can't do any welding at the moment, we're gonna attempt to build our bench. Thanks to Emily's uncle, we have quite a lot of wood. So, and that's gonna be, I think, perfect for, for a bench for structural strength. Oh, this was the wood that I spent hours pulling the nails yeah. and screws out yeah. of. So obviously we're we... using this then. Yeah, so I think, We'll start measuring and build the bench. We decided to start framing the bench and... So we've got no power. <laughs> and so we're relying on battery powered tools. And, and the minute bench. you put pressure on it to drill these pocket holes, it just... nothing. And <laughs> the main thing is that that's literally just the first piece that we <laughs> wanted to attach to them. Like we've got so much pocket hole drilling to do and we've done just about one tiny little plank. <laughs> Looking like not much work was going to be done, we headed out to Wix for some more supplies whilst we tried to think how we could carry on. Quick update. We've got power. More power, baby! So power's back. Now there's a lot of pocket drilling. After a pretty disastrous morning, we finally started framing the U-shaped bench and actually made some progress. Pretty good going, all things considered. And the poo station. No. What we have done is created our base frame for our U-shaped bed. All rock solid. So yeah. We've got... That's a pretty good To be honest, effort. it took a long time. Maybe because we had no clue what we're doing. Oh, yeah, I don't think that's that bad. We didn't make that many mistakes. There wasn't that many yeah. mistakes. It's probably about nearly five o'clock. So I think it's probably time. Guess what's the time? To go. <laughs> it's time. To go. So yep, tidy up and get back here tomorrow. Today was the day we repair the entire right side of the van and treat the rust. Whilst Amos is prepping his side for welding, I am going to carry on with the wheel arch. I've just kind of sanded it back a little bit. I still need to kind of build up the arch bit here. A little bit more filler there. I might try and put some just on this inner archway here as well because that's a little bit uneven and then hopefully that might be the last one. So I got to finish. Jesus Christ. I need to finish welding this bit and I need to have a look at this patch and hopefully I only need to do this on this side. The other side is but just as Aramis thought he was nearly done with the welding, applied more filler like here and sanded down as much as I can on the top and bottom of the ridge to create the archway. I think that's about as good as we're going to get. But upon holding onto the wheel arch to sand it, I may have found a hole. So that's a little bit more welding for us to do. But I think I've done a good job. Considering I've never worked with it before, I'm gonna take that as a win. Well, it was so, an accident. Yeah. So our um, weekend routine changing to like, 
couple hours of welding and then jumping back inside. A couple hours of welding and jumping back inside. And we need to, I think, redo something about the bed because we were thinking about things and we were thought that the table was a bit big. Yeah, because our original plan was to have a table on a swivel that drops down to create the centre of the bed. Yeah. But the gap and the length of what we've got would mean that the table is like the size of a regular dining table. Yeah, it's like really big. Which is just not necessary. We're gonna probably do this side, sliding and lifting up. Yes, yeah, so we kind of want it to slide out to that side to create the middle, but also still have the ability to lift up so we can still yeah. have easy access for storage. But the issue is now that uh, the length, uh, that the width of this bench is it's too narrow too narrow because so. if you use the same amount here it stops somewhere like here mm. so there's still a gap yeah. so we're gonna have to what, extend this bit out more yeah. so that whatever folds out still fit inside leaving the newly discovered hole for another time we got back into the van to start creating our sliding bed this part took a lot of brain power most of our time was spent measuring and measuring again we knew what we wanted it was just a case of creating it we built the front frame and cut out all the slats we needed. We then started to assemble all the pieces together hoping we would end up with a fully functioning sliding bed. Whoever said, measure twice, cut once, cheers mate. Unfortunately, we're admitting defeat. We had enough today, half of the day just trying to build this sliding bed. We had to redo the last weekend's uh, work. That didn't work out because we still have too big a gap. We were thinking, should we do the lift, lift up one or like foldable one? After hours of trying to build it, would you like to show what's happening? What's happening? There's not a lot. Yeah. It should be coming out at least another like, but yeah. it's just... It's just getting wedged in. It's getting stuck everywhere. We've taken the screws off, replaced them, put them back, and we just cannot. And now it's making it quite difficult to get like fully back in as well. So we're just giving up today. I, I don't, don't know. know how many more times we can unscrew and screw planks back on. And it's just. Yeah, it's, just, it's basically just too tight. So we're going to need to undo everything. You can see how. It's getting wedged in. Like, yeah, it gets a bit tight here. I don't well, know if that's our cutting or... Yeah, I think my first, first mistake that might be the cause of all of this might be that I was just cutting the circular saw just with the eye. And obviously it's not perfectly straight. So, because we tried to gap it just again, just by the eye, gaps wasn't... The gaps are better, but yeah. it's still not. And so next time, now, next time, before. yeah, we used the spaces, so the gaps were exactly the same, but for some reason it just got really wonky. We're gonna leave this for next weekend. Yeah. Now we just tidy up and... Get out of here. Get out of here. See you in a few seconds. Fresh minds, we came up with a better plan. Good day, people. Good yeah. day. Good day. <laughs> We spent quite a lot of time rethinking about this bed and we decided to redo everything. I mean, we failed in quite a few places here, so we're gonna yeah. scrap all this plan and redo everything different. We actually made quite a lot of mistakes that we actually screwed uh, the fixed uh, planks on a bit that doesn't even lift up. So if we want to lift up, everything's fixed. But that's already a oh, mistake. I didn't even know that. We forgot to put the washers there. So it's really difficult to pull it out because there's no gap there's no, in the back. Yeah, no movement. So that's already the second mistake. Third mistake that we screwed everything a bit wonky. So everything's get wedged in. I think. I mean, we did cut these slats ourselves as well. So there is yeah, a chance they, that they're, they're not, not straight. Beautiful. And I spent some time doing the actual design. So basically that's a rough design what we're thinking of doing this section needs to slide in and out and i was struggling a bit to find the actual correct measurements because i had to design this without the measurements but now we've done our measurements yeah fingers crossed yeah so we basically we decided to actually redo the this side of the bench so it's going to be top frame and placed under the actual bench 
frame. I see the vision how it might look like, but it's very confusing when you're just like thinking about it. So I think we'll, let's just jump and start building the top frame. Yeah. And once we got the top frame, we can just build the, the bottom one. The new plan was to build the top frame separately to the bottom in order for it to slide out and lift up. We used a 9mm piece of ply to evenly space each slat onto the frame. We screwed each one in as we went along to avoid the slats from shifting. Once all the slats were secured, to slide it back into place we had to cut every other slat at a 45 degree angle to allow it to slide into place smoothly. To finish the day, we dropped the bottom frame down to make it level with the opposite bench and adjusted the length of the legs and attached the top frame to the wall with hinges. Operation sliding bed, almost complete. Hey! We got our sliding bed. And it actually worked even better than I was expecting. We might change slight, uh, a few things slightly. At the moment we have just sliding bed coming out and resting on here, which has like another piece of wood attached and where it can rest. But I have some feelings that uh, what if that thing is going to slide off in the middle of night and all these things just collapse inside. So we might put some like a front frame. But as you can see, it lifts up. Got three hinges there, and then you can slide this piece out. It's a bit creaky, but once all the mattress is on and everything, this is a properly functioning. Look at that! Oh, that was actually a lot easier and less stressful than I thought it might be this time. Well, I just like that the. the, the, the function of opening it and it slides yeah it still access all the storage and that's like a big i don't even think this will do it justice but i mean that's quite a no, big yeah it's a big space but look at that yeah so i think we're just gonna fit like some sort of front frame here that would just have two legs and then yeah. gives it a bit of extra support it's got enough movement yeah Happy? Yeah, that's the idea. And that's it for this weekend. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and let us know what you think of our build so far. We have our first little giveaway over on our Instagram page for reaching a thousand followers. So make sure you go and check it out. We will be drawing a winner on the 1st of May. See you next time as we finish the bench and make a start on the kitchen. Bye.